Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE SmackDown from August 30th, 2016, and well, uh, this one was a mixed bag. Uh, there was definitely some good segments in, on this show. Um, they started off the show with uh, them recapping the Miz, Daniel Bryan segment from Talking Smack from the week before, with the you know very impassionate promo that Miz did, and the aspect of the back and forth that Miz and Bryan did at that time. You got a short segment backstage with uh, Daniel Bryan and... Uh, Shane McMahon uh, basically saying like you should apologize and then even uh, Brian Joe's office says like uh, we're getting this kind of advice from a person who has a beef with Brock Lesnar right now uh, type of thing so it almost feels like they're building tension there I don't know if that's the actual aspect that they're going for but that was what they uh, what it felt like you had no real interaction between Brian and uh, Miz in this one. It was later done on Talking Smack saying all oh, those two aren't working on TV for a while or ever again or something uh, something in that sense. But Miz comes out and cuts a promo right at the beginning of the show. A uh, very impassionate promo. Uh, very good promo from the Miz in, in, in this case. He gets interrupted by Dolph Ziggler who challenges him to uh, challenges him to a fight. Both and like I said, both of them end up having a back and forth in the terms of a promo. Good promo in this sense as well. Um, but, uh, after he challenges him to a fight, Miz does the typical backs off and everything like that. And, and uh, it, it was weird for someone to use safe as an insult, considering what's happened recently in WWE. That was really weird that they used that, that Dolph uses that word. Um, but they're playing it off that it's going to be Miz and Dolph Ziggler here down in the, down, down the road. So we'll see how everything goes here. Uh, the... They also had two first round mat uh, matches in the tag team title tournament. Uh, the first match was the Hype Bros versus the Vaughn Villains. This was a, a rather quick match that was heavily dominated by the Hype Bros, and it, uh, it, it basically put them over pretty good in, in this in the sense of everything. But uh, again, really quick match. It wasn't kind of like last week's matches where they were, you know, you, you expected to know who was going to win, but. Or you pretty much expect it would be like the Usos and American Alpha, but they still put on rather decent matches. This one was more just very much in favor of the Hype Bros, and it looks like they're continuing to push the Von Villains like down, down a little bit more each and every single week right now, which is very unfortunate in that case. Uh, before the second tag team, ma uh, tag team match, I'll get into the aspect of the Heath Slater family segment. It was an interesting one, kind of, uh, kind of a, a very interesting segment. The interactions between Rhino, Renee Young, uh, and Heath Slater, and what would be his wife in, in, in this in this segment was a very interesting, and it it was I, I won't say funny in certain aspects, but I get what they were going for. They were kind of um, what is it? They were kind of going for he's kind of down down in the you know down on his luck and everything like that, wanting the SmackDown contract. Uh, you have Rhino just kind of chilling around with like the cheese whiz and the crackers the entire time. It was a very weird segment, uh, and I think he gets the point across what they were trying to go for. But like I said, it was a very weird segment in the end. And this brings to the Heath Slater Rhino tagging up for the. Uh, shot of the tag team titles in the first round in the first round of the tournament, and they go up against the returning headbangers. That was kind of out of left field. I know they posted on Twitter like days before, but still, the headbangers. That was out of left field. Uh, out of left field there. And again, uh, really quick match here. Nothing really much to it. A uh, little bit of back and forth between Slater and uh, both Mosh and Thrasher from the Headbangers. Uh, eventually, they gain dominance, uh, and Rhino eventually just tags in and gores, uh, make, uh, gets the gore and gets the victory. So they. Uh, so, like I said, really quick match. Both the matches this week in the tag team title tournament were a little bit lackluster. In the terms of match quality, like the story they're building with uh, Heath Slater, they even have like people are even bringing Slater's kid signs into the uh, into the arenas now, which is actually kind of kind of good to go along with it. It's aspect of uh, it's an aspect of him actually getting over with the crowd, and I like it uh, in that in that sense of everything. 
But like I said, in the terms of match quality, the this week not so good. Like last week's was a lot better. This week not so much. Um, and the interesting thing is they they put up the brackets. So it's Slater and Rhino up against the Hype Bros and American Alpha versus the Usos. So the two teams that you would expect to be in the finals are facing off in the uh, semifinals with American Alpha and the Usos, which leads you probably to believe they're doing something with this Slater gimmick, uh, uh, Slater and Rhino thing, uh, and taking that into the pay-per-view itself. And it should be interesting to see how they play off of it going in, uh, going into there. That's what I would assume they're going for. We'll see where they actually go with everything. You never know. They might go with uh, Raleigh and Ryder as well in this case. So we'll see how they decide to go with everything here. Uh, you had a backstage segment with AJ Styles and Apollo Crews where, you know, AJ was kind of, you know, uh, doing the who are you type thing. And apparently Apollo Crews likes spelling out five letter words and, uh, and everything. I like the interaction between the two of them to an extent. Apollo Crews, not so good on the mic yet, but it, it came off a little bit better than what I've seen in the past, but he's still you know, got a ways to go in the terms of the, the mic work. The aspect behind AJ Styles just in general kind of saved those segments. The way, uh, like, the way he interacts with people, the way he's coming off, uh, he's coming off as, like, the biggest douchebag in the company right now. And it's, it's coming off really good. It's coming off great. Uh, so AJ Styles comes out to cut a promo uh, about, you know, him beating John Cena and... Uh, the aspect of the WWE t uh, World Title match at the uh, at Backlash, uh, but he gets interrupted by Apollo Cruz, who event uh, you know again starts cutting off a, pro uh, a little bit of a promo again. So good on the microphone, good in the ring, but not good in the microphone. Uh, and uh, it does challenge AJ to a match. The match happens. The match between AJ Styles and Apollo Cruz that was a pretty good match, uh, and it. Like I said, it was just a pretty good. It was a pretty good match from both sides. There, it at least shows off one really good aspect of Apollo Crews, which is his ring work. Uh, and it, like I said, that was actually one of the uh, better points of the night. Like I said, ups and downs. Like I didn't really like the tag team title tournament matches this week, uh, but there was a couple segments that I liked in the terms that weren't really matches. You also had Alexa Bliss and Natalia going up against Becky Lynch and Naomi. And you had Nikki Bella on commentary. This one eventually leads to where you just have Nikki Bella like in what felt like the most monotone voice that I've heard Nikki Bella come off. Like her face, her aspect of being a face, I, I don't like it. It's uh, at least in the terms of promo work, it, it, it she just comes off very monotone or very bland with everything in the terms of her face promos. Uh, I, I guess in the terms of character-wise, she's always been better off as a heel. She's been getting, she got re uh, really good in the ring uh, over the, over the past, over this last stint that she's had with the company. Now she's back uh, from the neck injury. So we'll see how, uh, every, how she eventually plays off in the ring when they have her back in there. Uh, Carmella, also, uh, Carmella also attacks Nikki Bella from behind. She wasn't on commentary or anything like that. This causes a distraction inside the ring somehow. Yeah, I don't know how that causes the, Becky to get distracted because uh, Carmella attacks Nikki. I, I don't know. But it allows Ale Alexa Bliss to roll up Becky Lynch and uh, get the victory that way. I see why they're, do why they're doing that. They're, they're trying to build everybody. You have a six-pack challenge. And, uh, sorry, stumbling over the words. Uh, you have a six-pack challenge at the pay-per-view for the new women's title. you got to try to put over everyone going into it. And this is one of their ways of doing it. it the segment was all right. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that good, though, in, in the sense of everything. This leads into the main event of the night, which they really, they really were only hyping it through vignettes. You didn't see anything with Dean Ambrose or Baron Corbin going into the actual match itself. It was pretty much there. And what's happened with Baron Corbin's interaction with uh, Kalisto? Are they still playing the injury angle for Kalisto at this time? Because they haven't had any kind of interaction in the last couple shows. So it's interesting to see if they're going to continue on with that or if it's pretty much just 
done with what they were doing backstage with Baron Corbin and Kalisto. Uh, the match with Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose, it was a good match. Um, you had AJ Styles on commentary. Oh, yeah, and before the match, you had, what was it, Gary the Milkman inside the ring? I, I don't know. Well, basically, this segment was just to rem- uh, now. I, now that I think about it a little bit, this segment was there to remind you that Kane's on this show. Because that's what happens. Like, the guy gets, he cuts a promo saying he wants a match and everything like that. Eventually gets undressed down to his tidy whities Ken comes out, and for whatever reason, the guy decides he wants to put all his clothes back on, too. It, 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 it's a little bit of a head-scratching segment. Uh, in there, he gets choke slam, Kane leaves. Uh, back to the Corbin Ambrose match, which, like I said, was a pretty good match uh, from both sides here. Um, AJ eventually causes the disqualification by accidentally hitting Baron Corbin and gets and basically gets stopped himself. So basically, last week I believe they're, they're kind of doing fifty fifty booking here again. Last week I believe Dean Ambrose came out on top. This week, AJ Styles comes out ahead of Dean Am- or Dean Ambrose comes out ahead of AJ Styles. So AJ gets the he- gets the best last week. Uh, Dean Ambrose gets the best this week. Though the interaction was kind of funny when he stops the phenomenal forearm. I like how he just like shakes his hand and walks off. That was a pretty good uh, pretty good spot uh, for for that aspect of everything. Uh, a lot of the talk this week was pretty much through AJ in the terms of uh, building the match. Otherwise, they didn't really do much with Dean Ambrose in that sense of building this match with him and AJ Styles, which is a little bit weird. I, like I would like to see a, an interaction between the two of them, and maybe that's what they're saving for a later uh, a later show is that interaction and talking segment between both guys. So we'll see where they go with everything in this. Overall, this week, like I said, it had its ups, it had its downs. There was at least a couple good matches on the show to go along with it. A couple really good segments, too. I like the promo with Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. Um, And uh, the AJ Styles Apollo Crews match I thought was pretty good to go along with everything. A little bit of disappointments. I wasn't a big fan of the uh, tag team title tournament matches. It felt like they they didn't play them off as being competitive, really, in any way. Uh, but in tow, I also like the uh, sl- the Slater, uh, Renee Young, and Rhino segment uh, from before, uh, right before the match. So uh, that came off relatively well. But like I said, ups and downs this week on SmackDown. Uh, it is what it is in that case, I guess. Uh, but that is my review this week for WWE SmackDown. I thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.